I know I'm late. I was trying to get a couple things in beforehand, and things took longer than I expected. I apologize. Hello. Eating lunch, too. Kind of. Biscuits and hummus. I don't think that's traditional, but I like it. So we'll, we'll go with it. In the meantime, we left uh, Eskos here. Uh, I think I had him as uh, astrologer a moment ago, but uh, I'm going to go get a little gun breaker so I can get them into 72. Left. Um, where do we leave off? Let me take a look at my book here. Here, we could actually look at this. No, I don't think that's it. Yeah, so he gives us a room. Uh... I think we ran into Ardbert. It could be. Journal. Don't say. Anyways, we got a room at the pendant. Better shifting. I'm pretty sure we ran into Ardbert, the warrior of darkness from a couple expansions ago. Okay, cool. We're going to the Dossal Gate. And we're to meet up with the uh, Crystal Exart in the uh, Ocular. Standard gatekeep stuff. Uh, I believe there's a bunch of VOs, so I'm going to turn this up. I'm probably going to mute myself for a while unless I have comments. Ah, how did you find your new quarters? I trust you were able to rest? Eh, I had a ghostly visitor, but that's about it. I was not aware the room was haunted, and you were rather tired. Well, should you receive another visitation, be sure to let me know. Now, let us return to the subject of the Scion's whereabouts. This map shows the lands of Norvrand, the only area to be spared the Flood of Light. The Crystarium is here, in the region known as Lakeland. And to the north is the Fairy Kingdom of Il Meg. That is where you'll find Orianger. To the east lies the once prosperous civilization of Rak Tika. Your Stola is stationed there, in the heart of the forest. Alas, neither location can be reached without considerable difficulty. As such, I would suggest you first seek out one of the twins, each of whom is stationed but a short flight from the Crystarium. Alphano is on Calusia, an island off the western shore. It is home to a city called Yulmor, where the rich and privileged while away their days in idleness. For his part in furthering our cause, Alphano journeyed there to meet with the citizenry and forge alliances. From what I hear, he has since kept himself busy gathering information around the main settlement. 
Alize, meanwhile, traveled south to the arid wastes of Armoreng. They lie upon the very edge of the inhabitable world, where the flood of light was halted. Those who dwell there live in constant fear of attack by the Sin Eaters. In contrast to her brother, Alize felt that her energies would better be spent learning about the enemy, and thus she sells her services as a guard, both to hone her skills and gather information on our foe. So, will it be Calicia or Armoreng? It matters not which you choose to visit first. Hey, remember at the beginning of pretty much both Heavensward and Stormblood where you got to a point and all of a sudden you had to go two ways in order to get back to the main. And you can go either way. It doesn't matter which order you did it in. Here's the choice. Simply inform me once you have made your decision, and I will see to it that you are provided with a suitable mount. Ah, but you must be wondering about Thancred. He has taken up with a new companion, and is presently engaged as a wandering hunter of Sin Eaters. Being ever on the move, his whereabouts are often difficult to ascertain, but I am certain your paths will cross ere long. Since we're still in the level 70 quest, I think... Okay, so it gives me both choices. But Alize more of a kindred spirit to than Alphano, so let's talk to Alize. Al I'm going to punch faces, or at least use my gun blade, and you know what I mean. Ready to part for our meringue? Alize will be overjoyed to see you safe. I know she's particularly concerned for your well-being. That's another thing, is she left me. <laughs> you said... <laughs> To stay together, don't part, and there you are, right there. We both had the headache, and you left. <sighs> Anyways, she uh, impressed upon me how regrettable the time unit for summons was. Repeatedly, I only hope that my part in sending it to her will garner me some measure of forgiveness. Here's a letter of introduction addressed to a man named Kassad, Kassad, master of the merchant caravan. 
There are a few who know the ways of the desert as well as he does. Find him at the Amara launch, and he will see that you reach your destination. Oh, man, I'm just going to pick up the search for Alphano. <laughs> Might as well. We'll visit Alphano and Kalusha, then. Excellent. As I mentioned, your destination is an island off the west coast. You know, kind of where Vilbrand is, a.k.a. Uh, Lenosha, a.k.a. where uh, uh, Limpsa Lamensa is. With Lindsay's. Anyways. So you'll need a mount capable of making the journey. Here's a letter of introduction. Presented to Sim Dijmai, the master of beats at Temenus Rookery, and he will take care of you. When you see Alphano, be sure to pass on my warmest regards. All right. But we're going to do the search for Alize, in search of Alize. So we're going to go up to the Amara launch. Hmm, there you come to... If you come looking for work, I might have a spot for another guard. Actually, I think it works a little bit. Oh, oh, Master of the Exarch. Uh, hope, hope to meet someone in Amagrang, are you? Then I guess it'll be your guide. I'm about to set off on our outpost here. As a matter of fact, can we leave right away? Assuming you have anything you need, everything you need. That's why I think that the the. Godgens? The Rogans. The Rose. You can now travel to Amarang. Speak with the adroit Am Amaro Tamer and to fly to the desert. You can use your Aether Compass to assist with locating Aether Currents in new regions. Should you lose your Aether Compass, seek out Jesserin at the Amaro Launch in the Acrostarium to obtain another. Lost compasses can be replaced by speaking with Gvoint at the Forgotten Knight and Foundation back in Ishgard. Basically reminding you, oh, by the way, there's Aether Currents. <laughs> or the Strange Filling, you probably want to fly in. Earth, the nation of Nabath, Arang once rose. When I journeyed here long ago, I spoke with a sun-weathered elder. He told me Armoreng meant majestic land in the language of his people. And so it might still be, were it not for the light's unrelenting onslaught. Music here is kind of nice. And kind of spooky, actually. Pull up on a piece of current map. Oof, no matter how many times I come here, the heat never fails to catch me off guard. Don't be surprised when the temperature drops at night, though. Sky is still bright, of course, but it does brisk. It gets brisk enough to make you shiver. Now, the Exarch's letter said it, it would take you to. I was to take you to the inn at Journey's Head, which is where Ali's it, this Ali's a friend of yours is staying. But that's a fair good old distance. And so I propose we make a stop in Mortuk to break up the trek, allowing me to attend to some business and you'll enjoy the local hospitality. Sound good? Good. All right, you lot. I'm off. I better not see the goods covered in sand when I get back. You got it, boss. 
Right. We head southwest, straight as an arrow. I always think I, that we're on the south side of the map, but we actually come in on the north side of the map. I don't know why I think it's on the south side. I'm just disoriented. Okay, quickly here, quickly, quickly. We're about 34. Well, it's close to where we're going. So. Okay. Here we are. Can we avoid these armadillos? I love continuation. I love it so much. Stop here. This is your first visit to Amarang, is it not? Before you cross the river of sand, you need to turn around and feast your eyes on that. They built them big back in the day. That's Kassar Shal, a fortress meant to protect the northern reaches of Nabratharang. Seeing what was left behind, I believe it, when they say it was once more of Norrent's mightiest nations. At least until the flood came along, great chunks of Nabratharang lands were lost to light. It's a great city indeed. I mean, it's a great city including included. It's great big it's great city included. I can read, really I can. The few you survived didn't see much pointed stain, most of them anyway. No, not many choose to come here these days. Not with everything in ruins. Even that hulking great fortress that became little more than an Amaro roost for me and my cavern. But not everywhere is as deserted as this place. Just wait until you see more Tsuk. Let's press on, shall we? No, it's like... Oh, it's over there. Kill a few things, shall we? Um, actually, let me top off my food.
instead of trying to go around, just can I climb up this? No. Grow the uh, avatar, the cactar, much bigger over here. Welcome to Mordechuk. There we are, Mordechuk. I have the best, blessed shadow. I love this town. Mordechuk, not just just full of mord, but humes and all matter of. Of others too, it has long, long been a refuge for folk who are displaced by the flood. So the population is nothing if not dis di diverse. Yeah. Oh, have you met met a morgue before? Mord before? It might look like a shifty little blighters, but a f but a more more welcoming lot you'd never wish wish to meet. Speaking of which, you should pay your respects to Master Gengen. I'll go. I'll go ahead and let him know when you've arrived. What are mords? They're cobalts. So a couple of first things first. Uh, I'll talk to the Morrow Keep because, well, there's no trick boot keeps. Those are Morrow Keeps. Up here and into the Aether right? Can easily just teleport here at a later time. And find Cassard and the cobalt. So you ever wonder what those cobalts look under their mask? That's a cobalt. They have voiceover. Hey, I I did the voice actually uh, decent. Very good, very good. Though friend or no, all are welcome in Mord Sook. Sook is Mordish for city. As things stand, this souk boasts the largest and busiest marketplace in all Armorang. You'll find ore from the mines here, of course, but all manner of other things too, many of them rare. I'm gonna have to adjust Kassard's voice, although I don't think I have to voice him much. As I told you before, not many visit Armorang by choice, but Maud Souk's a different story. Merchants come from miles around to purchase the relics the Maud dig up. Aye, that they do, for Maud do not dismiss the spoils of the earth. We clean them and polish them and reveal to the world their true value. That is why they come here, come from far away, come with much money. And so our souk is always busy, busy, busy. No such thing as a thing no one needs. You say that every time, Master Gengen. Uh, some sort of family motto, wasn't it? Or perhaps a Maud philosophy, for which we should all be very grateful. Would that everyone was so willing to take in refugees regardless of race or creed. Now then, if you intend to spend any time here, you'll want to gain the trust of the locals. And there's a little custom all newcomers are expected to observe. The cracking of the coin purse. 
You buy one thing from the market. Price can be low or high, just as long as you buy. As the good Maud says, in fact, the Exarch sent a little something to cover this very expense. A Verbert gold piece, no less. The first I've held in years. Verbert gold? Real Verbert gold? Here, newcomer, crack your coin purse with me. Oh no, you want my goods, newcomer? I have jars and pots, all smooth and shiny. Over here! Come and look! You buy, you buy? <laughs> Enough of that! Calm, I say! <laughs> this one must still journey through the barrens. Nothing bulky, nothing heavy, no pots! <laughs> nothing better for the road than a full belly. Spend that piece at Ron Ron's place, yes? Eat for three before you leave. Ron Ron wasn't one of the ones that came charging up. Mm. All right, let's speak with Ron Ron, see what he's got. Cobalts and food. Welcome, welcome to the run, to Run Ron's Traveler. I have wares to empty your purse and fill your belly. Take your time, share and sniff before you choose, but no drooling on the merchandise, please. I'm, I'm just gonna gonna take it as 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 everybody kind of sounds like Gengen. Hey, yes, oh, it's great. Oh. Start. It's like a thing, but it's really just kind of like point at something. Oh, there's worms. Everyone's favorite plump white worms slathered in honey. Once you eat a glazed wriggler, you'll never want any other treat. Okay. Red. Oh, this should be a. I call this mush loaf. The middle is stuffed with bittersweet cactus fruits, so even if the bread dries out, it is still moist inside. Keeps you going in the heat. Oh, actually, that sounds kind of tasty. Oh, some sort of meat. And that's my ever-burning bounty. Made with the best parts of the lizard. The cured with special spicy spices. Some find the smell challenging, but it'll warm up on chilly night, uh, desert nights. And there's some skewers with frogs on them. Oh, you'll like those chewy skewers. Find small frogs hiding under rocks, here with stick and roast over a fire. Crackling on the outside, gooey on the inside, perfect for snacking. They all look tasty, yes? Which which to choose? Which to choose? Uh, love some of the mush loaf. <laughs> ah, very wise. You won't wither on the sands with a gut full of cactus. You have the gold. And done. One verbert honor. Buys you 40 loaves of bread. <laughs> well. Every... That's... That's... I think I'll hear the rest. <laughs> Our visitor invites us to feast. Let us give thanks for the great generosity and small appetite. 
Consider your coin purse cracked. I am pleased to accept your custom, and Gengen will be pleased that you honored ours. <laughs> Keeping the merchandise down yet? Keeping the merchandise down, yes? No returns. <laughs> Even though it actually kind of sounds good, it's just like uh, like bread with uh, with some cactus fruits, it's like a pop tart almost. I was watching from here as it goes. You honored our customer with great relish. Oh, you will always be welcome to Mozuk. If need anything in armor rank, we are here to provide. I was already impressed with your gastronomic fortitude. <laughs> ah, <laughs> you have courage, my friend. Run Run's fare is more exotic than harmful, but I don't envy you the belly ache you'll have in the morrow. Right. Now that we've eaten, I guess we we're, we're eager to get back on the road. Would you mind if we delayed our departure a touch? We have a few deals still to still left to close before I conclude my business here in Mordsuk. Enemy. Oh, offering your services, are you well? Aye, well, it is system would certainly help her hurry things along. I have a receipt here for some goods that you need picking up from the market. All, all properly paid for, you just need to do the lifting and carrying. I'll go and take care of uh, some last-minute haggling, then. See you in a bit. I don't know, I'm, I'm getting the voices confused, but that's okay. Anyways, I got a market receipt. I'm gonna look it up. Put in my bar so I have uh, easy access to it. Oh, I can actually. Uh, Thon Ton has Table Cactus and Thol Tol Iron Ore. Nabathering Antiques has our Mill Mill. We collected from Mol Mol. Table cactus from Thonton, so the sack of uh, Rubenies. Oh, it's in my chat log, too. You can't see it because I'm in front of it. You came in, in with Kassad, yes? Good, good. I have finally stopped talking think about that sack. Please take your prickly purchase. This is... The Dabatharang antiques collect, uh, from Mill Mill to be collected from Mol Mol. Hey, no touching that merchandise is spoke for. You can possibly change your mind for a better offer. Oh, I got a receipt. What? Kassan sent you? Well, why didn't you say so? I wouldn't dream of selling his goods to a high... Higher bidder. Oh, no, 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 no. Now it's the relics, wasn't it? All packed in that box there. Handle with care. So last is Baltol and some iron ore. Baltol. <coughs> Jesus, I'm sorry. I didn't get to the mute fast enough. Oh.
Uh, let's get some more. Ah, Tolto, Crater Bore. Hey. Kassad sent you, did he? Right. Yes. What kind of wool was it again? Uh, it was iron ore. I know, of course, that will explain this box I have here. It's all yours! Don't worry about these really large boxes that are bigger than me. I'm just going to put it in my hammer space. Well, don't tell me you've been around the entire market already. Yeah, we got uh, some more more suit merchandise here for you. Aye, right, that's a lot, all right. Good work. And quick work, too, considering you're not just set forth in place before. I thought you'd, you wanted to sit in the city like the XR, but something tells me you're not a stranger to visiting strange lands. Unfortunately, your efficiency presents something of a problem. I had hoped to conclude on my business before you return, but it seems that there has been some confusion over one of the orders I placed. Oh, I have to drag in my middlemen and sort this mess out. I'm sorry to make you sit around and twiddle your thumbs. Kassad, it feels like an age. Kassad, it feels like an age since I last saw you. Well, it isn't a lovely Tesseline. It's been a while, but your timing timing couldn't be better. This gentleman was on his way to meet with Elise. Yeah, I'm supposed to be taking him to your corner of the desert, but a misplaced order has commandeered my attention. Wait, I know who you are. Elise has told me so much about you. You're Essigos, aren't you? Yeah. I knew it. How wonderful to meet you in the flesh after hearing all the all those stories. I'm Tesline. I work as a carer, a carer in the inn, and I've gotten to know Alize quite well since you took up guard duties there. Do you want me to take over for as Essigos' guide, Cassard? My shopping's all done and packed for the road, so it would be no trouble. That would be a great help. Thank you. Well, it looks like you'll be able to head straight out after all. My caravan and I will be in the area for, for a while yet. Seek me out when, you, when you've had your fill of Amarang, and I'll send you back to the Crystarium. Thank you, Kassard. And I get a, a gear coffer. Which I won't be using, because I got <laughs> item level 400 gear. Alize has been desperate to see you. See you, Eskos. Let's get you to, to her sooner rather than later. Vienna isn't too hard to find, really. You actually see the top of the rock spires from here. You just need to swing around the edge and then head south. Come on, I got my supplies together and meet you outside. All set. Oh, I probably should mention the wildlife. While most of them will leave you be if you keep your distance, the local coyotes have learned to prey on folk heading home from the markets. I could usually swing swing a sword well enough to fend them off, but I may have let myself down with too many bargains today. Do you think you can handle any beasts that try to make a meal of us? Yeah, yeah, sure. Thought you might. Ali is always saying how much you... Uh, I mean, let's get going. Shall we? Think. And cliffs where we're going to. Animals.
Oh, I didn't even get to finish it. Sorry, there wasn't much time to sh shadow warning. Were you bitten? Those things can be nasty. But yet, yet hardly a match for you, it seems. I always thought Alize was strong, but in her mind, she was never... Hmm. No, it makes sense. Hmm. Um, well, we, we should push on. It might be best if we scout ahead and you scout ahead and clear out any coyotes that have our scent. I'll wait here so you can fight without any distractions. Oh, hold on. South, east. I can hear it. There it is. For her, forehand, I was working in Lakeland. Oh, I actually only have three left. Wow. I, I still have the quests and stuff to do, but. Flip right through here. I think somebody's on the same quest I am. Here you go. There's like miners out here. Hold on a second. Let's see if we can help out with these guys over here. Yeah, look at a gem dealer for those gemstones because I think I can use them as currency for some. Oh, thank goodness you're back. I can hear the howling and snarling from here. Grateful creatures. Let's hope the rest rest have seen your handiwork and know how to avoid us now. I need to get these supplies back to the inn. She saw launch lines like this is a dear average day in the Namarang. It's so one of the things where, where I'm like, well, it is an inn, but who's, who's doing the pain? Okay. I was just checking to see how close uh, stuff was. We are just outside. This is it. Thanks to you, I didn't have to drop my shop shopping even once. Come to think of it, I'm glad I didn't ha make the trip alone. It seems you ended up escorting me. I have to repay the favor somehow, but first, let's head inside, shall we? I think we have some voice acting.
or maybe not. Yeah, a little bit. Welcome to the end that journey's head. May be our first vis visitor from the Crystarium since Alize arrived. It's not much, but it's home for the afflicted and the handful of carers. The afflicted? You don't know? I don't think I've met anyone besides Alize who is so unfamiliar with our situation. Most folks have grown up knowing someone who knew someone. Should you, like, go find a place to put that down instead of just, like, giving me a speech? <laughs> you keep, keep kind of, like, adjusting it. We can, we can walk and talk if you want to. <laughs> There, there, Alan Sorkin had a great this great idea of walk and talks. Hmm. I might leave out some something obvious, but it may be best to have Ali say give you the full explanation. <laughs> it's just, it was a full conversation. Now, where is she? Hmm, I think she might be out on patrol. You could wait, I suppose, but why not go and surprise her? She usually takes a look, look at things from the watchtower first, so you might be able to catch her there. It's not far. Head, head out the south side and you'll soon see it. I'll stay behind in case she comes back while you're gone. I'll keep. Trust me, they do come in handy. Oh, and hey, would you look at that? Nathan the current right here. Got that one. Hey, there's footsteps over here. At least there's nowhere to see them, but you spot fresh footprints on the ground, and they look to be right about the right size. Oh. Small footprints uh, lead off to the northwest. Uh, let's avoid some Gilman. Although, I'm probably just going to surprise this one. Footprints curve around to the west.
See if anybody dares to fight me. Yep. This guy's in the way. More tracks here, but they end in a mess of disturbed sand. I think we're getting into voice acting. Turn it up! Impressive? Should, should I say I'm impressed? Or should I take a jab at her and say you almost lost that one? <laughs> okay. This is us guys. You can jab. You almost lost that one. I had it under control. Right up until the moment I didn't. I'll do better next time. I knew you'd turn up sooner or later, but I had been hoping for sooner. How are you? I almost thought she was going to turn around and just give me a huge hug, but I suppose she's not that affectionate. So here's the here's what happened afterwards. I almost got killed by Zito, so I was saved by Hastinian. and it was all, all freaking crystal. You That's into a point. standstill then. Exarch did say that the Empire seemed to have drawn back when he last looked in on the source. But without knowing for sure how fast time was passing there, I couldn't help worrying that a lot might have happened since then. I'm heartily relieved to hear that it hasn't, just as Alphano must have been. As you can imagine, both he and Urianger were desperate to hear the news from home when I arrived. I haven't actually seen Thancred and Yishtola yet, but they will have heard all the latest developments from the Exarch by now, or should have at least. When I think of how frantic Tataro and the others must be, I want nothing more than to rush back and reassure them. But we still haven't found a way to reverse the summoning. And even if we had, we couldn't just ignore Urielje's vision. He may use ten words where one would suffice, and they may often obscure as much as they reveal. <laughs> but on this matter, he was as clear as day. I do not doubt for one moment that he saw what he claims. Nor how difficult it must have been to speak about them. The Eighth Umbral Calamity and your death aren't exactly topics for idle conversation. As much as I might want to go home, I don't want to go home to that. We can't allow the rejoining to happen, which means we have to save the first from the Sin Eaters.
That great wall of white is a remnant of the flood. A hundred years ago, the balance in the first tipped decisively in favor of light. From that moment, it rose and swelled with each passing day, and then, without warning, it burst forth like water from a broken dam. A colossal wave of pure light, drowning everything in its wake. Only Norvrant was spared. For the most part, living things are composed of ether of various different aspects. But when exposed to such a flood, their etheric harmony is shattered and their natural form breaks down. Then they either perish or are warped into mindless abominations. Yes, that's how the Sin Eaters came to be. They were once living creatures or people that were caught in the path of the Flood. Once the change is wrought, there is no going back. In that instant, they are gripped by an insatiable appetite for ether and will happily gorge themselves on any living thing within reach. But even that is not the worst of it. The stronger Sin Eaters can plant light in us, like seeds in soil, corrupting our ether and triggering the birth of new monstrosities. They are creatures of base instinct that exist only to feed and to multiply. They feel no pity, know no remorse, and are utterly deaf to reason, which is why they must be destroyed, every last one of them. The infirmary is full of the Sin Eater's victims, left here to spend their final hours waiting for the change to overtake them. So I've been learning a little bit more about Sin Eaters and where they're from and what happened, blah, 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 blah. It's just a matter of time, more, more for some, less for others. Those patients will all become monsters in the end. And to add insult to injury, the afflicted are feared, shunned, cast out of society and exiled here to the edge of the world. The only good thing I have to say is that this hellish place is, has served me well as a training ground. Tessli and the others have also been kind enough to share their knowledge with the Sydney test, which is knowledge I can now share with you while we, while you help me finish my patrol, of course. Here's what we'll do. I'll take the east side of the inn, you clear the west. That way we can have an undiluted, undiluted experience with you can have an undiluted experience with resident terrors. These marks on the on your map are where the usual trouble spots are. You can ensure that only beast with a white hide or carapace is a sin eater, but you know for sure you'll know for sure soon enough as they will come slathering after your ether. Remember, it's kill or be killed with these monsters. Once you've slain whatever's prowling around there, you can rendezvous back at the north entrance. Good hunting. Think. And five moms to the west. I think it's over there. Uh, let's. Oh, there it is. Never mind. I'm gonna take a kind of roundabout look. Look. I'm writing them at five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I got everything I can. Because this map is split. There's an entire section over here I can't get to until later in the the, the expansion. And actually, there's a little spot down here, obviously, with the mark, but so I've I've gotten what I can for the moment. I don't know why I dismounted.
Well, this one looks clear. Uh, the samuel's awful close. Oh my goodness. Um no, I'm just I'm gonna just keep going up as a tank. Yeah, I'm gonna save and just, just focus on that. How did you fare? Yeah, I got two senators. Oh, I thought that might might be one or two looking in the fringes. Nothing out of the ordinary for this area. I expect that you notice it to yourself, but individually, these lesser sin eaters are no more deadly than any natural predator you might encounter in the desert. It's when they appear in numbers that they pose a threat. Much like the void scent, they have an unfortunate tendency to flock in the, to the strongest of their kind. Thus, when a powerful sin eater goes on the hunt, it might be attended by a veritable swarm of weaker kin. Imagine an army of such creatures descending on a village or hamlet. That's the basic idea behind my patrols, to call their ranks often enough that the numbers won't be overwhelming when the big ones come out to, out to play, and we're certainly helped on that front. Let's report our victories to Tasleen. Mm, shall we? I want to say this video. And... Maybe not. Alite tells me you've ha you've helped out her in patrol. You have my thanks. And my apologies for leading you from one battle to another ever since the moment we met. In any case, I'm glad to see the two of you found each other. You have no idea how badly Alize was missed your company. Everything is always, if Essekos were here, he would... That's an exaggeration, and I don't sound like that either. I'm simply trying to view matters from another perspective, and I respect Essegos' methods. <laughs> Honestly, after seeing him in action, I can understand why. The way he leaps into the fray without hesitation it really is something to behold. I might be a little smitten myself. <gasps> That's like, wait, what? No, I, I, I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm only teasing, though I've no doubt he deserves all the admiration he gets, just as you do. Mm
I'd love to lay out a welcome meal, but the duties I've, I've, I, but the duties I put off when I went to the market is still waiting for me. Ugh, oh, there's a hundred and one things that need doing. I'm sorry, but would you mind waiting here with Alize? What? And put a lot of thumbs while you work to yourself to get? Certainly there's something we can help you with. Okay, count on me. He does say it because I'm small. I could do with a hand, it's true. Thank you. You can start by helping me sort out the larder, Elise. While we do that, could you lend attend to a few patients, perhaps? There are three in particular I meant I meant to visit. Just a matter of saying a few words to them and seeing that their skin isn't caked in sand. Their names are Ponil, Totten, and Holrick. Like, they may not give much in a way of response, but I promise they'll be pleased to meet somebody new. It looks like a Highlander human. Dang. Hey, big guy, how you doing? Make sure you're all nice and clean here. Kind of glances up at you blankly, but you notice the tension in his face ease slightly. Or it means utterly still as you wipe the sand from his cheek. Texture of skin is hardened into something akin to plaster. Let me see to the patients. How are they? Good. That's good. I knew they would enjoy meeting you. I'm concerned about Hulrick, though. I'll have to speak with the other carers, but I think it's time may be near. We should leave leave you to have that discussion, then. I'm go I was going to take Eskos to Motsuk, if you have any errands that, that need doing. Well, I suppose there's one thing. Would you pick up a nectarine for the markets, please? Saw its caravan just passed through, so Ron Ron should have some fresh fruit. Come then, Iskos. There's something I want you to see. Right after we stop with at Ronron's stall, of course. Pop over to Mordzuk. Oh, back again, are you? I need another taste of Rod One's wares. Actually, we were looking to buy a nectarine. Do you have any in stock? Oh, yes, nectarines, peaches, grapes, fresh and juicy. Hmm, given how richly you cracked your coin purse with me, I might still owe you food. Here, take this one, free of charge. Cos, I've never seen a mod merchant give away something for nothing. How much coin did you spend here? Oh, yes. I'll take a jar of honeyed worms as well. What? <laughs> <coughs> oh, no, they're not for me. It's an offering of sorts. Ahem, the worms, if you please. Oh, the best regulars for you. Come again, my friends. Right. And our shopping chores taken care of, let's head, head up past the Aetherite to the main tower. The view I want to show you has only been seen from its very top.
Here are your precious worms. That buys us a trip to the top of the tower, does it not? <gasps> Glaze wrigglers! You actually brought them! I really shouldn't touch you, but just this once, all right? Only once. Never fails. Shall we? Do you see what lies beyond? That's what the land became after the light flooded in. An empty white nothingness. Life cannot exist in such conditions. The primordial light would wreak havoc on the body's etheric balance. That nectarine you bought, it's Halric's favorite fruit. Most of the patients, Halric included, survived the attacks of powerful eaters, but their fate was sealed all the same. The monster's corruption has entered their bodies and their very essence is being subsumed by light. The twisted state of the world itself just makes matters worse. Under normal circumstances, a person's ether naturally tends to equilibrium. But for these poor souls, the opposite is true. Sooner or later, every single one of them will turn. Tesleen and the patients, they all know this. They know what has to be done before the change goes too far before the eater within takes over. The preferred method is mixing poison into their favorite food. In my time here, I've borne witness to a lot of last meals. I feel just as helpless as before. No matter how hard I fight, it's never enough. But it's a war I mean to wage, nonetheless. Speaking of wars, do you remember how I made you promise not to leave me and then promptly collapsed? <laughs> well, let's just say I had a few choice words for the Exarch concerning the timing of his summons. <laughs> but even if the fault lay with someone else, I couldn't shake the feeling that I'd abandon you on the battlefield. So I swore that I'd make up for my absence there by making a difference here. And that's what keeps me moving forward, even when things seem hopeless. On which note, it's time we headed back. The longer we keep Tesslin waiting, the harder this will be for her. Put it back in hammer space. By the way, if you keep hearing me say hammer space, I'm wondering what it is. Let me actually uh, bring up a, a hammer space. Wikipedia has, has it. Hammer space, also known as mallet space, is a fan envisioned extra dimensional, instantly accessible storage area in fiction is used to explain how animated, comic, and game characters can produce objects out of thin air. Typically, when multiple items are available, the desired item is available on the first try and within a handful of tries. Essentially, Hammer Space is basically a bag of holding without a bag. <laughs> or, or even just a portable hole. I mean, this is in my inventory. <laughs> All this shit is in my inventory. No, not just that, but all this shit. Everything you see here is in my inventory on my little person. And I don't know about you is I don't see any sort of backpack or bag or anything on here. 
on my character, yet it is all available f for me. So if I ever say hammer space, that's what I'm referring to. Because it's not a bag. It's not a bag. There is no bag. We just like put it behind our back and it disappears into this extra, extra dimensional space, also known as hammer space. Do we care about it? No, it's just convenience. You know? Anyways, I turn the volume down. I'm glad I was able to show you that. When it comes to understanding the catastrophe which befell the first, one glimpse of the empty wasteland beyond the wall is worth more than an hour of Orianger's lecturing. And I needed you to know beyond a doubt that Tesseline has no other choice. The nectarine will be a kindness. It isn't just the threat posed to others. When a person becomes an eater, their pain appears, appears to be excruciating. The carers are truly fond of their wolves and would, would spare them suffering, and is, their best, and is their way of fighting back against a fate worse than death. All right. In uh, Journey's Head. You're back. I hope you had a nice time. Did you manage to find a nectarine? Thank you. Alize explained why, why I wanted it, has she? I can see in your eyes. But you may not need, need it just yet. I spoke with the others. We decided to keep an eye on Halric for now. Thanks to you, though. If his time does come suddenly, we'll be ready to send him on his way with the of happier days. Well, nothing is going to happen for a little while yet, so let's see if we can't lighten the mood. We don't have, don't want our gloomy faces worrying the patients. I think it's time for that welcome meal, don't you? Take a seat. I guess a nice seat. I think we have some voice over here. Speak up if you'd like another helping. I made a little bit more than usual today. And you've added something special to the broth, if I'm not mistaken. Aye, well, it's not often we have visitors from the Crystarium, so I may have thrown in a few extra bits and bobs. Uh, I'll have another bowl then. That's what I like to hear. Give me a moment to warm up the pot. In a place like this, you learn to take what moments of happiness you can get. I remember when I first came here with my mother. She was showing the early signs. I knew there was no way to save her. But I just couldn't face what needed to be done. That's the way of it for most people. Why they travel for arms to stay here. Beaten, broken souls come to wait out the inevitable. To receive the mercy of a painless death. When my mother finally left this world, I was mad with grief, but also thankful that her passing was a peaceful one. It's never easy ending a life you've cared for, even when you believe they go on to a better place. I often find myself wishing the Warrior of Darkness would come and do that part for me. 
the warrior of darkness. You've never heard the tale? I'm not sure where it began, but every child in Norvrant could tell you a version of it. Warrior of darkness, servant of death, take care of our souls at our dying breath. Let sinners and eaters of sin go with thee, that all may return to the sunless sea. Well, that's the version I was taught anyway. It's just an old bedtime story. He certainly never deigned to visit us here. Which is a good thing, surely. He sounds rather ominous. Do you think so? I always liked the idea that he treated every soul the same, even the Sin Eaters. They're coming. Tesleen! Have you seen Halric? I swear, I only took my eyes off him for a moment. Uh oh. All right, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna monk this. All right, Eskos, Alize, we have to go look for Halric. I don't know what's gotten into him, but he's wandering out there alone. We'll sign search areas and split it up. Any idea where he might might have been headed? No, I've never done anything. He's never done anything like this before. But it can't be a coincidence that the other patients are suddenly so agitated. They can sense something. In any case, we keep the search close to the inn. Halric isn't very very sure on his feet, so he won't have gone far. I'll search the east side. Please, Halric. Please be all right. I'll cover the north and west, then. You take uh, take everything from here to the south. I feel a battle coming on. Uh, I'm sign of Halark. You can't surround the area to search for Holly, but suddenly find yourself under attack.
this voiceover in this cutscene. Any sign of him? No luck then. But he surely can't have gone far. We should keep looking. The Sin Eaters are out in force, and if we don't find him soon, you can be sure they will. Did you see the size of that thing? It must be one of the nasty ones. Wherever it's going, it can only mean trouble. After it! Deserve happiness wherever we can find it. The time left to you is precious. No one should die in pain. Mother, mother, I. The Horrors of the Sin Eaters. Well, we got Hallwork back. I... I'm sorry, Eskos. I tried to tell the characters what happened, but... Couldn't be the one to... Can't be the shoulder that they lean on. Not like this. Right. Religion. Talk to Kasana. It's so unfair. 
Tasleen was always so cheery with the patients, telling them not to be scared, that there wouldn't be any pain of all the people in the world to suffer such a fate. Imagine, imagine you're just as shocked as the rest of us, so I appreciate that you're doing here. Me? I can barely... I don't have the words. Without a body, we can't even give her a proper burial. She cared about this, that sort of thing. About giving people the chance to say their goodbyes. Howark is unresponsive as ever. He stands motionless, staring into the sky where the Sea Eaters made their escape. Book with the cares. Thank you. What you do. It means a lot to them, to me. Sorry to interrupt. We, uh, we realize we haven't thanked you for rescuing Elric. You weren't hurt at all, were you? Hurt. It wasn't even a fight. It was too late. Too slow. Thought I could protect you. You can't blame yourself for things things beyond your control. You brought Halrek back safe and sound. No one could be done more. No one could have done more any more. I'm sorry, but I've made, come to make a decision. I won't be continuing my role here. I hope you'll forgive me for leaving, and that you will delay Halrek's last meal for as long as you possibly can. Not until it's too late, of course. Or it's just... Give him what time you can. We always do. Of course. He would have done the same. Farewell, Halric. Keep Tesslin's words close to your heart. Wait, you're leaving this very moment. I understand how you feel, but certainly there's the that this is a bit hasty. Do you even have anywhere to go? I have a destination in mind, yes, and a purpose. This damn light building without cease. It's the reason we can't save those corrupted by the sin. And what if we corrected the balance? Even if it were only little by little, even if it took years. It surely make things better. Now hold on there. Everybody knows there's too much light, but how could you ever hope to get rid of it? We have to change the whole world. That's right. We should return to the Crystallium. I may not be able to repel the Eaters on my own, but I could use the skills I've gained here to hurt them. I have no idea what, what to make of it. Yeah, let's do this. For fun, because we're basically going back up to the caravan, I think. Right up here. But first, we go to Mercy. I am going to use it tomorrow. Just so you can kind of see what it looks like. And tomorrow has four wings. There is an achievement that if you get uh, all battle classes to level 80, you get an Amaro mount. Obviously, I'm not working that on that here for Esigos. I'm way far from that. But an Eligos, 
I'm slowly but surely creeping up. Mm. I'm looking for something. And yes, there's an ether cart right up there. The only thing is it's inaccessible from here. There's a cave behind it. Okay. Got the answer I was looking for. Well, kind of. It was not the answer I wanted, but... For, forgive me, Essigos, I couldn't stay there. 
moment longer. But I'm serious about what I said. When the men and women in, the, in battle against the, this blight for kindness, I must fight it my own way. Steel. Miss Alize, is there anything I can get you? Ah, uh, you'll switch it to Amaro. I need to return to the Crystarium immediately. Amaro. Uh, as you wish. Ugh, remind me to wear goggles so I fly over on Morang again. I've barely, barely gotten the sand on my eyes. But the wind did help to clear my head, at least. I think I'm ready to meet with the Exarch. We need to talk about how we're going to wipe the Sin Hitters out, shall we? Hmm. That's okay. You have business with the crystal ascot? Just say the word, of course. Thank you for see seeking me out, Ascos. I meant a lot to have you there at my side. I was tempted to set off again the moment we had the decision upon a direction, but you have still to visit Alphano, don't you? And if I know my brother, he'll be on the cusp of discovering something vital to our success. If he has it already, I'm content to stay here and consider our options for the time being. But don't keep me waiting too long, eh? Okay. Basically, I finished the Alize quest line. And now it's time to go to Alphano. Since this is kind of a batch of quests that that I just did, I'm going to actually uh, quick down up uh, of the stream. We'll switch over. Also, I'm going to um, refresh beverages and oh, we have coffee. And uh, use the restroom. So if you're watching live, stay here. If not, uh, see you in the next video. We're back. It only takes about an hour and 46 minutes. Not bad. <laughs> 